Yed Murtaza Mir Jabreli and today I want to talk about our paper titled Multitask Transformer for Stock Market Trend Prediction which has been done as a part of project in part AI Research Center. Also I want to thank Ato Suluki, Hamid Reza, Sultan Rizadeh and Mohammed Sabu Group for their help. In this presentation, first we will go through introduction about the stock market and some of the difficulties of prediction of the stock market trend. Then we will go through literature review and the effort has been made in order to predict or forecast a stock market. After that, we'll go through our model and our data set and we'll explain our methodology. At the end, we'll look at the results. For prediction of the stock market, we have two important assumptions. One of them is efficient market hypothesis, which says that asset price reflect all information and trading will be done at a fair price, not undervalue or overvalue. And this makes it impossible to outperform a market with any kind of analysis, like technical or fundamental or other kind of analysis. On the other hand, with the growth of computational models, we have inefficient market hypothesis, which says that the market is not completely efficient, and it will be, it could be predictable. And uh, there are some challenges for prediction of the stock market. One of them is it is non-linear and dynamic and stochastic. Also, its chaotic nature make it hard for uh, prediction and usually for prediction of the site market we have two targets one of them is price the other one is trend for prediction of the site market one of the first methods that has been used is a statistical which exponential smoothing model is one of them and it works by giving higher weight to the newer data and lower weight to the older data. The other one is ARIMA or Auto Regressive Integrated Moving Average, which uh, uses a uh, pass value lag and uh, residual forecasts lag to improve the prediction and the forecast of the future prices. And also, we have the modified version of the ARIMA, which is GARCH, which captures volatility in order to improve the forecast. Recently, by the growth of the deep learning models, there are many efforts to use deep learning architectures such as CNN, RNN, or autoencoder in order to use it in the forecasting and prediction of the stock market. And in this paper, we are using transformer model to do so. For training our transformer model, we are using Iran stock market data. And to do so, we are using open, close, low, and high prices alongside volume of trade. Since transformer models has huge amount of parameters, we face a new challenge, which is for a single stock market, we have little amount of data. In order to overcome this problem, we come up with the solution of panelizing the data. By panelizing the data, we were able to use other stock data in order to train our model. In this paper, we are using last 40 days of each stock in order to predict next 5 days trend. But for creating samples, we need some consideration as we are using panel data. One of them is that samples should be from a single stock like this not like this for example we are using day four and day one as a training set which is not acceptable so after creating a sample from day three and day four we will skip to the day one and day two of this stack number two
The next thing is that to be sure for splitting data into the train and test set, the training data wouldn't be completed from, uh, for example, seg number one, and the test data would be from the seg number two. And we have to have training and test data from both stacks. The other consideration is that each stack has different distribution and they need to be scaled separately. Now for labeling the next five days trend into five classes, we are using quantile barrier labeling. Quantiles are the points that split the distribution with equal prob uh, probabilities. We are using this method since the distribution of data across the time would be changed and uh, equally separating the levels of the trend is not a really good method. For validation process, one of the main things that is being done in deep learning and machine learning is k-fold cross-validation. But as we are using time series, this would promote data leakage. In order to overcome this problem, we are using purge cross-validation. We consist of two main points. One of them is purging, the other one is embargo. Purging means removing any overlaps. In this case, if we, if we wanted to create our test set exactly after the training set, we would have some data leakage. As the training, last training set, we're going to predict the next five days and it's no about the training set. So we are removing five days between them to be sure there is no data leakage. Also, we are removing the uh, next five days from after the test set to be sure there is no data leakage. There also. Embargo means removing a proportion of the data after the training set. Since the time series data, especially financial time series data, are highly correlated, there might be some information in the training set that might help in the prediction of the test. Set. So we remove a proportion of the data to be sure there is no data leakage. Now let's talk about the architecture of multitask transformer model. The main part is the transformer, which is highlighted here. The main part of the transformer is attention mechanism. In attention mechanism, the data are split into value, key, and query, and passes through linear layer, and after that, the dot product of them are concatenated and then passes through linear layer. The other important thing in the transformer is escape connections. The escape connection helps us to overcome the vanishing gradient problem, which has been done in many other architectures too, such as ResNet. And after the attention mechanism and the residual connection, we are seeing batch normalization in the architecture of the transformer. So far, we know the architecture of the transformer model, but we have done some modification to this. As we are not inputting the raw data to the transformer model. By feeding the model with the raw data, we don't give any information about the time. In order to solve this issue, uh, the time would be passed through the time to wake function in order to get a representation of the time as a vector. And the representation of the vector would be in two different ways. One of them is uh, non-periodic, the other one would be periodic. And in this paper, uh, the function f is chosen to be sinusoid function. Lastly, let's talk about the output of our model. At the beginning of the project, we only wanted to classify the trend class for the next five days. But in the middle, we came with the idea that forecasting these five days would, uh, would help the classification task. As you are seeing here, using multitask architecture has helped the classification task a lot. And also, based on that there is no baseline for our work, 
we had to train other models to compare our work. And the best results are for transformer model with the multitask version. Thank you for your attention and if there is any question I'm happy to hear them.